So I wanted to make a quick video showing you some different ways to handle doing hands inside of VR. And as you can see here, I kind of have two different examples. The one in my hand here is a static mesh just attached directly to the controller. And the other one I have kind of this more physics-y setup. So you can see this one that's a direct connection, it's really stiff. Where this one that has a physics constraint kind of gives this soft bounciness to it. And you'll see where that comes into play here in just a few seconds. So again, if you see I take the one that's more hard and I push it through the table here, um, there's no physics response. You can see that even though there's a collision volume on this cylinder, there's a collider on the red kind of box, which is the table, it just passes right through instantly. And for VR, that kind of takes you out of the immersion. But on my other hand here, I have a physics constraint. So the two spheres and a cylinder at the end. So what happens is you get this very natural kind of response to when objects collide. And that's awesome because we get this much more organic feel and like trying to touch objects, you can see it freaks out with the solid connection because the physics engine can't resolve. Whereas in this other mode, we can kind of get a soft touch and you can actually kind of feel when you're putting a little bit of pressure or a lot of pressure into an object. And this allows us to do things like turning it over softly. It allows us to even do things like picking it up, feeling like you're putting pressure with your arms into an object instead of it just kind of being this all encompassing superpower. The other thing you can see here is that I have this really janky skeletal mesh I set up just for testing. And the hand that was solid rigged just goes right through, whereas the hand that is set up with the physics constraint actually will hit the collider and kind of move out of the way of the skeletal mesh. Okay, so let's take a look at how this is set up if you wanna do that in your VR game. So I'm gonna open up the pawn, and inside of here, you're gonna see a couple things. So if we go to the viewport, which again, this is just a, um, a character pawn. You can see I have a scene root, the, car the camera, and I have a left and right hand, which are hand motion control components, okay? So the left hand we saw first, which was kind of our generic test case, which was a motion controller component, and then there was just a static mesh directly parented underneath of it. But on the right motion controller, right here you can see, we have a physics constraint, and if you look carefully, you can notice that it's constraining this sphere to this sphere, okay? So we have one sphere, again, it's just static mesh, a second sphere, and then our cylinder. And on the physics constraint, when we add this, we need to manually type in the name of the first component, which is named sphere, and then we manually type in the component that it's gonna connect to. And that's kind of it. See what I'm doing here is, I'm locking out all the linear limits, and then in the angular limits, we're not letting it swing, but we're letting it twist, and it's the twisting is actually being locked, I, I lied. So we're limiting the swinging motion in the X and Y, and then we're setting kind of like its value here, and then we're setting the stiffness and its constraints. And down here in the angular motor, twist and swing, the only thing we've set is the strength to about 5,000 to kind of help um, kind of defeat that ability for it to want to um, just be loose. So this is kind of giving us some of that resistance. And if we look at the event graph, there's nothing fancy going on here. I did some things to offset um, the cylinder. This just takes in the one stick and I can kind of move out that cylinder at the end of my arm in and out. That's all that was doing. So it's a really quick example. I don't wanna make this video too long. Again, if you directly parent, you're not gonna get nice collisions. But if you can play around with possibly putting different constraints in, um, and again, these don't have to be this far apart, they could be basically on top of each other and it starts to act kind of like a wrist. Um, and you're getting much more realistic responses to the world. And these don't even need to be rendered, so ultimately you can kind of have this hand or whatever controller gun that will kind of act more appropriately to the world around it. So. If you found this video helpful, um, remember just to add a like or tell me if you think there's something else I should cover. And uh, I'll talk to you guys in the next one. Cheers.